We constantly in our everyday lives make trade-offs between the fidelity of an experience and its convenience. It happens when we decide to watch a baseball game on TV instead of going to the park, make a phone call instead of meeting face to face, eating fast food at McDonald's instead of a nice meal at a restaurant. In his book, Trade Off, Why Some Things Catch On and Others Don't, Kevin Maney defines Fidelity Swap and provides a powerful framework that explains why some products are good enough to be hits. So let's take communications realm as a way to explain one aspect of this. Now, one of the things that's interesting is that um, this trade off, this trade off that people are willing to make, is different for uh, it's different all the time. It's different for every every age group, every every geographic location, every individual, and it actually diff is different depending on particular situations that you as an individual are in. I mean, you're willing to make these different trade-offs depending on what's going on around you at any particular time. So it shifts with with ages, with demographics, with with all sorts of um, things, and, and companies are going to have to watch that and and, and understand that 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 chart that spread of where things go and where people what trade-offs people are willing to make is different for different sets of customers. My understanding is that fidelity is more than the quality of a product or service. Fidelity can be summarized using the qualitative equation. Fidelity equals quality plus social aura plus identity, which is also the character. In simple words, something special, something of good quality and limited availability. Inconvenience is orthogonal to the fidelity of a product and can be qualitatively summarized as convenience equals cost plus accessibility plus complexity. In other words, easily accessible of low expense and low quality. The way those trade-offs work and play out in the marketplace is the key to countless business success and failures. The Fidelity Swap has been going on since the humans invented commerce, but the role of technology today accelerates the whole process. Everybody all the time makes uh, some kind of a, a trade-off between the fidelity of something, which is I'm finding is kind of the quality of the experience, the whole enchilada, both how good something is and the sort of aura it has about it, um, and the convenience of getting it. So the trading off the, the fidelity, the quality of an experience for how easy it is to get. And um, a, a quick example of that would be uh, in the music industry, there are two things that are doing really well right now. One is big time live concerts like U2 and Madonna and those kinds of things, uh, which is a very, very high fidelity experience, even though the convenience is really terrible. You know, you gotta pay a lot, you gotta you know, park, you gotta listen to Bono rant about something. Fidelity is the total experience of something, visually seeing the bands, the lights, the effects, the crowd around you. Most of the time, however, we will choose the low fidelity, high convenience experience that is listening to you two on a digital music player stuffed in a pocket. But fidelity versus convenience decisions are not static. They change with circumstances. Sometimes moment to moment. People with different priorities. People with more or less income. Different age groups make different trade-offs. Technology constantly improves both fidelity and convenience. If a product or service is the highest fidelity today, 
Technology and innovation will soon make it possible to create a product or service of even higher fidelity. Contrary to what many businesses want to believe, achieving both high fidelity and high convenience seems to be impossible. Kevin Maney refers to the place in between as the fidelity belly, which he defines as any product or service that is neither extremely high fidelity nor high convenience. Any company or product that attempts to capture both is likely to fail. According to Kevin, it's the no man's land of consumer experience. No one gets very excited about a product or service that has so, so fidelity and is always somewhat convenient. A very rare example of high fidelity and high convenience is Google Search. Super fidelity or super convenience, that what defines the winners. Most successful products seem to fall either at the far end of the fidelity axis or at the far end of the convenience axis.